This board is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. We open up on our opponent's turn with one, two, three, four, five disruptions, preventing them from touching the extra monster zone. But then we can follow up with an orbital hydrolander to put some spice on top of it. And this should be enough to win the game. Or cussed, too strong. The unique thing about this deck is that no matter what you put in place of some of the staple cards, you can still orchestrate the same combos as the versions that have topped in today's meta. On that note, I decided to move away from the conventional Orcus deck in favor to not only show you some of the budget options, but some interesting choices that may pique your interest. As for longevity, the strategy just got its last pieces, so I don't see it playing its last sonnet anytime soon. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button. But more importantly, go ahead and that notification bell, because, well, we just too strong. Also, want to give a special thanks to every single one of my Patreons without you guys. Videos like this would not be possible. And also, a mad shout out to our newest Patreon, Sebastian Higgins. Welcome to the clan. Make sure you add yourself to that Discord, as well as me or one of my admins, so we can get you the top dog, so you can take advantage of all your rewards. Without further ado, I present to you a competitive Orcus deck profile for the May 2019 format. Orcust is tier 1, there's no debate about it. Just having access to one card insane disruption boards, as well as having access to play around hand traps, your opponent is going to have a hard time breaking some of the boards that you make with this deck. Coincidentally, this deck is also very, very, very budget. It can be extremely cheap depending on how you guys decide to build the deck and still be competitive. I'm going to be breaking down how this deck can be played in multiple ways, as well as the budget options and some more of the other options that other players play. Starting off with the monsters, we run three copies of Orcust Harpoor. This is no debate. You probably, actually, I shouldn't even say probably, you should be running three in every Orcust deck. Why? Because it is the main card. It's best summons Orcust monsters from your deck to your side of the field for free. And all Orcust monsters do have the restriction. I apologize for the live duel not going through with the full combo. I'll be able to show you guys in this video. They have the restriction that if you activate those effects, you can only spell summon dark monsters for the rest of your turn. The only fortunate thing about that or it's not even unfortunate because darks are the most supported attribute in Yu-Gi-Oh! So it isn't even really a drawback when you look at it that way. Next, we play two copies of Orcus Nightmare. You play two copies of this card for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, if you open Orcus Nightmare and you only play one of them, your combo is pretty much dead. The second thing is Orcus Nightmare can actually be used multiple times, especially on the opponent's turn, to send the important or certain Orcus monsters to your graveyard so you can gain their effects. Now, none of these monsters are quick effects. They're all ignition effects, but when you have your Orcus Orcus Field Spell card, all of them become quick effects, basically. So yeah, you can use them anytime. Next is two copies of Orcus Symbol Skeleton. This is a card, actually, you can run three and three of these cards if you so wish, and I'll be able to explain to you guys why. But this card is really important because it allows you to spell summon an Orcus monster to your side of the field. And a lot of times, summoning Orcus monster to your side of the field can either extend your combos, but on your opponent's turn, it provides disruption. The card that of the hour, a card that I feel is really good, and especially if you guys decide to run a 3-3-3 engine, Orcus Brass Bombard. Now, the reason why Brass Bombard is really good, in my opinion, is because not only is it an Orcus monster, it is an extender. If you have any of these guys in your hand, it basically gives you another opportunity to pop up with your combos. Uh, more importantly, if you have Orcus Nightmare in your hand and Brass Bombard in your hand, you can normal summon the Bombard, use it for a Link Summon a Link Krebo, link, then Brass Bombard's effect in the graveyard to summon Orcus Nightmare, and congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, you have the exact same Nightmare Servers combo that you guys would have uh, just with two monsters. I think that that was really interesting. And if you guys wanted to go a more pure or cussed route, then that would be something that I really consider, or I want you to consider to look into. One copy of World Legacy World One. This is a card that you guys can play multiple copies of too if you go a more pure route, mainly because I, I, people don't understand that when this guy is sent to the graveyard, he actually spells someone's a World Legacy monster to your side of the field. That can be used as an extender, but banishing him to spell someone any of your dark machines back to your side of the field is just as good of an effect. It's the effect you're going to be using the most. That's it for the Orcus slash World Legacy support that we run inside of this deck. 
Um, I didn't feel that running any more uh, was really important. Uh, if you guys wanted to go that 333 route, you know, it's still very possible. Machine duplication actually becomes a card in mind because you can machine dupe your, of course, Nightmare. You can machine dupe your Brass Bombard. You can machine dupe quite a few targets in this deck. But uh, next, for the support cards, everything else from here on out is pretty much an extender. Three copies of Neo Space Connector. Um, when this guy is normal summon, you can spell summon a Neo Spatian uh, from your deck to your side of the field. So we play three Aqua Dolphin to complement the connector. And a lot of builds, you guys seen a 3-1 or a 3-2 build. I feel that 3-3 is actually perfect because drawing Aqua Dolphin with some of the other cards in our hand, it's just literally having two monsters so we can pop up with the combo. And another thing about Aqua Dolphin is, of course, you can hit some of those hand traps in your opponent or that your opponent has so they can hand trap some of your critical plays. Next is two copies of Scrap Recycler. You guys seen this in the live duel and you don't necessarily have to play this card. Ironically, it's starting to become more of a budget option as, to, as, a pair, as compared to the Trickstar cards, uh, mainly because the Trickstar cards are shooting up in price because of this deck. Scrap Recycler allows you to send a machine monster from your deck to your graveyard, which can come up a lot in this particular deck, mainly because I run three copies of Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. Now, O-Lion has multiple situations. So, O-Lion plus Scrap Recycler is literally the exact same combo that you guys seen in our first sequence. Also, Neo Space with Aqua Dolphin plus Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion is the exact same two card combo. It'll get you two cards, in, or oh, two monsters on your side of the field, so you can pop off with the exact same combo. And on top of that, having a Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion in your graveyard and one in your hand, you banish the O-Lion to summon an O-Lion, immediately normal summon it, and you have the exact same combo. This was just like, it comboed so well with the deck. It played well with Aqua Dolphin. It played well with Scrap Recycler. It plays well with Danger Monsters if you decide to play them. It's too strong. Next is two copies of Danger Sunoko. Uh, Susunoko. If you guys cannot afford Danger Susunoko, do not worry. Literally, I put these two in here because they're space fillers. I, I was at 38 cards, and I was like, I need another extender. Let's go ahead and play this card. It works really good with your Neo Space, your Aqua Dolphin. It works good with your O-Lions. Um, and the fact that it's going to be summoned no matter what is the, what I was looking for. I didn't like playing the other danger monsters because if you were to have all your danger monsters, which is good and sometimes hitting cards like your Cold by the Grave in your hand before you start to pop up with your combos could leave you in a situation you don't want to be in. Nonetheless, I thought two copies of Sunoko because you could discard it through your card effects and get a free monster to your side of the board and allow, still be able to extend your plays. Let's say if your uh, Neo Space Connector got Ash Blossom, you can just summon Danger Sunoko and then continue to pop up with your plays. One copy of Phantom Knight's Cloak in uh, Silent Boots. I wouldn't play anything more than this, ladies and gentlemen. I think this one and one is solid. I was playing two and two and opening one of these cards probably the worst thing you could have because you can only use this effects once per turn and once you go off with your combo you're already using the effects another spicy tech i decided to play was orbital hydralander this card's actually searchable in the deck and if you open this card or the search card in this deck you can summon this turn one with ease um any other time after that you can summon it to your side of the field and the next best thing is if you have your babble on your side of the field activating orbital hydralander to mill off any of your uh or cuss monsters can only get you just pluses because if you mill multiple or cuss monsters you can banish them as quick effects and then summon monsters to your side of the field to make sure this card resolves for the hand traps i play one copy of ash blossom one copy of fanatical one copy of effect veiler i wanted to be really spicy today and uh, you know the only thing that's going to get in your way of orbital hydrolander is your connector dolphins but um i wanted to play one one and one because i don't know i just felt like it uh if any other case you guys can play three ash blossoms three effect mailers uh two fanaticals and two it does it doesn't really matter guys you can play whatever you want so i just wanted to show you that play three hand traps in this deck that is it for the monsters uh, for the spells, three copies of Cold by the Grave uh, to stop my opponent from stopping me. Two copies of Twin Twisters, uh, the Mirror Match, uh, Sky Strikers, and um, what's that deck? Uh, Mystic Mind, Orchestrated Babel. Um, this card basically turns all your monsters to quick effects. And Orchestrated Return, you can actually drop this card for whatever you want. It's not important to the deck. It's just a free set. You can ironically drop it for a Crescendo because Crescendo is more important. This is an extender. This is an extender. This is an extender. Um, for the traps, two copies of Fog Blade. I figured out Fog Blade was probably optimal at two. One copy of Shade Brigadine and one copy of Orcrest Crescendo. This card's actually really busted. Sending it to the graveyard, banishing it, and it searches your orbital Hydralander. That is it for the main deck. Uh, side deck, we went a little bit interesting. As you guys can see, I do side the Shadow Engine, which is crazy because if you're going second against a deck 
or uh, you know a deck that relies on special summoning you can get a free shadow fusion beach dragon pop off normal summon a monster and then still pop off with the exact same combo so um i thought that that was pretty cool and also shit all window actually comes in clutch um the rest of the cards is pretty standard i mean really can't say much about that for the extra deck two copy of dingrisu um you can run one copy of this card and get away with it i don't think i think that two is optimal but if you only could afford one i know it's thirty dollars one is is what you can get away with uh Borlo dragon this card actually is getting three another reprint on top of its already eight dollar reprint so i'm pretty sure you can afford this world sword dragon can actually be orchestration if you guys want it to be just to fill that spot it doesn't do the exact same thing but world sword dragon is you know one of a kind Topologic Bomber Dragon. Um, when you do make this card, it'll be pretty. It'll be pretty nasty because you know you can prevent your opponent from linking off. Nightmare Unicorn cards nasty. Uh, Long Grisu. This card is actually a part of the combo where you can make uh, the two. Uh, you can make the two Fog Blades um, have access to Ding Grisu and being able to disrupt their Link Monster, uh, whatever monster they're summoning into the extra monster zone. One Rusty Bardic. Uh, two Galtea pretty standard we run two copies of nightmare phoenix don't be you know disturbed by this i can't find my second one nightmare servers and two copies of nightmare mermaid that is it for the main board extra deck and side deck um another card that you guys could play is obviously that link creep what i was talking about and then anything else the extra deck is pretty relaxed as long as you're playing your nightmare mermaids your nightmare phoenixes your rusty bardics and your galteas you're fine but that is it for the main board side board and extra deck let me guys let me show you guys some cool combos Okay guys, so for the combos, this is a one and a half card combo. Um, what you are going to need is either Neo Space Connector, either Scrap Recycler, Neo Space Connector, um, you know, two mech effect on these old lions, one engraved and one in hand. It doesn't matter. All of them are going to fulfill the exact same combo. I'm going to show you in multiple ways, and, you know, we're going to be going. So, with Neo Spatial Connector, you're going to need a couple of cards in your hand. I'm just going to put Call by the Graves as randoms because they would fill out the rest of my hand. What you are going to do is normal summon your Neo Space Connector. Use its effect to spell summon Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin to your side of the field. From there, you activate Aqua Dolphin's effect to rip a card out of your opponent's hand. Use both of these monsters for a link summon into Nightmare Cerberus. The reason why we make Cerberus is because it's the more useful, useless of them. And, you know, kind of there. Use Nightmare Cerberus for a link summon into your Nightmare Mermaid. Nightmare Mermaid is going to discard a card from your hand. And then from that, you special summon or cuss Nightmare to your side of the field. Use both Mermaid and Nightmare to link summon into your Galtea. And now you're going to use the effect of your Orcus Nightmare targeting your Galtea to give it attack and send a monster from your deck to your graveyard. The monster that you're going to send is Orcus Horror. Her poor to banish itself to special summon or cut simple skeleton to your side of the field. Now, Galtea can use this effect right now or it can use it right later. It doesn't even matter. Use the Galtea and the Orca simple skeleton for a link summon to make your Phantom Knights rusty Bardish. And now Bardish effect is going to activate. You are going to send from your deck to your graveyard the Phantom Knights Ancient Cloak to set to your side of the field the Phantom Knights Fog Blade. Use the effect of your Ancient Cloak to add your Phantom Knight Silent Boots from to your hand. And then since you control a Phantom Knight's monster, you can special summon boots to your side of the field. Use the effect of Orca Symbol Skeleton, banishing itself to special summon Galtea back to your side of the field. And now you can use Galtea to return the Orca Nightmare to set the Babel back to your side of the field. Or to your side of the field. Activate your Orca Babel and then use your Galtea for a link right into your Dingrisu. Dingrisu's effect is going to trigger. That's going to allow you to add Orca Symbol Skeleton to your monster. And then you're going to use your Phantom Knight Silent Boots and your Dingrisu for a Link Summon. Right back into your Galtea. Let me just put this one in the graveyard. Put that one. You know, we got to add a spice. And so basically, your ending board. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to banish the Phantom Knight Silent Boots. That's the last thing you're going to do to set a Phantom Knight's Fog Blade to your side of the field. So your ending board is going to be a Phantom Knight's Rusty Bardic, Galtea, two Phantom Knight's Fog Blades, as well as you now have access to Banish uh, Orcus Symbol Skeleton, two Special Summon Ding Grisu to where your Phantom Knight's Rusty Bardish points to, which will allow you to send a card to the graveyard or attach a monster as material, which will be either your Symbol Skeleton or your Harpoor, destroy a monster on the field, as well as you know do other things another thing that you can also do is activate your galtea's effect again so let's say we activated both of these monsters effects we destroy our opponent's card and we'll return this to our deck 
to set Orcus Crescendo to our side of the field, or you can set our Orcus Return. That combo, you can say a one and a half or two and a half card combos to activate your Aqua Dolphin is pretty good. Okay guys, so this combo is gonna require Scrap Recycler, Mega Phantom Beast, O-Lion, and if you guys want that crazy combo that you guys seen in the beginning of the video, add the Orcus Crescendo for your discard outlet. I also wanna give a match shout out to my boy Shovel1300 for pointing out that Orcus Crescendo can only add dark, or you can only spell summon dark machine monsters during the turn you use the effect, not just summon dark monsters. So you won't be able to use Crescendo on your opening turn, but during your opponent's turn, you can actually search the card that you need and then drop the Hydra Lander, which uh, will pretty much get you game. We're going to start off by normal summoning Scrap Recycler to your side of the field, and then with Scrap Recycler, you're going to send O-Lion to the graveyard. So I'm summoning a token to your side of the field since O-Lion was sent to the graveyard. Use both your token and Scrap Recycler for a Link Summon into your Nightmare Cerberus. And then your Nightmare Cerberus for a Link Summon into your Nightmare Mermaid. Now with Mermaid, we're going to discard the Orcus Crescendo to special summon a Orcus Nightmare to our side of the field. Everything is all fine and dandy right now. Using the Nightmare Mermaid and the Orcus Nightmare, we're going to make Galtea. And I would advise you guys actually not to use Galtea's effect in the extra monster zone. Because if you do use it and it gets like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, in, then you're in a pretty bad situation where if you use it later into the sequence and they Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, you're in a very much much better position. Now we're going to use the Orcus Nightmare to send Orcus Harpoor from our deck to the graveyard, and now Harpoor's effect to banish itself to special summon Symbol Skeleton. Symbol Skeleton plus Galtea for Link Summon right into our Phantom Knight's Rusty Bardish, and now our Bardish will activate its effect. We'll send Ancient Cloak to the graveyard to set the Phantom Knight's Fog Blade to our side of the field. I'm just going to leave it face up so everybody can see it. We're then going to follow up by banishing the Phantom Knight's Ancient Cloak to add the Phantom Knight's Silent Boots. And since we control a Phantom Knight's monster, we can special summon the Phantom Knight's Silent Boots to our side of the field for free. Following up, we're going to use the effect of our Symbol Skeleton, banishing itself to special summon Galtea to our side of the field. And now, we can follow up by using Galtea, returning the Orcus Heart Horror to our deck to set to our side of the field Orchestrated Babble. Activating the orchestrated battle following up. Now, I bet you guys are wondering, Cali Effect, this is okay. How did you get that Lone Grisu? Especially since you're going to use the Galtea for an Exceed summon into your Dean Grisu, and then you're going to attach the Symbol Skeleton. Well, you can't special summon Dark Monsters the turn that you use any of your Orcus Monsters effects but you can definitely gain an extra normal summon. We're gonna do so by banishing the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion to summon, normal summon, the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion to our side of the field. And now we have enough material. We're gonna use all three of these monsters for a Link Summon into our Long Grisu. And now we can use the effect of our Phantom Knight's Silent Boots to add our Phantom Knight's Fog Blade from our decks to our hand, setting it to our side of the field. On our opponent's turn, we can use the effect of Orcus Symbol Skeleton to special summon Dingrisu to our side of the field, which can either attach the uh, Symbol Skeleton to our monster and destroy a monster on the side of the field, or it can just outright destroy two cards on our side of the field. We can also use the effect of our Orcus, Orcus Crescendo, banishing itself to add Orbital Hydrolander, and can guess what, guys? We have exactly five monsters with different names to be able to summon this Orbital Hydrolander to our side of the field. This board is crazy, ladies and gentlemen. We open up on our opponent's turn with one, two, three, four, five disruptions, preventing them from touching the extra monster zone, but then we can follow up with an Orbital Hydrolander to put some spice on top of it, and this should be enough to win the game. Or Cust? too strong. Okay guys, so this is an excellent follow-up combo in case your board gets broken or just an alternative combo depending on the deck and the situation. It's going to require Neil Space Connector, any extender in your hand, whether it's Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion, Danger Sunoco, Destrudo, does not matter. And the last card is going to require is Orcus Harpoor. You're going to be able to make a, you can make the exact same board if you guys have the resources, or you can make a totally different board, which is pretty shut down depending on what you're going against. Start off by normal summoning your Neo Space Connector, and then use its effect to special summon Neo Space and Aqua Dolphin to your side of the field. Aqua Dolphin's gonna go ahead and pitch Harp Horror to, pitch a, to ditch a card out of your opponent's hand, or if you have um, your Destrudo, you'd pitch the Destrudo first and then activate Destrudo to bring it to your side of the field. Does not matter. From there, we're gonna use both of these monsters for a Link Summon into our Nightmare Cerberus, and Cerberus right into Nightmare Mermaid. Nightmare Mermaid ditching the Dangerous Susunoko to the graveyard to special summon to our side of the field, the Orcus Nightmare. 
there. Now, in this particular sequence, we have Dangerous Sunoco, so it's going to bring itself back to the side of the field, and we're going to continue off with our combos like we would as normal. Using the Nightmare Mermaid and Orcus Nightmare for a Link Summon, you make Galtea. And now, from there, you can go ahead and activate the effect of your Heart Core, banish it from your graveyard to spell summon Symbol Skeleton into your side of the field. Now, here is where the combo differs, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to use all four of these monsters for a Link Summon into our Topologic Bomber Dragon. What? This is actually a way to clear your opponent's board if they have something menacing or to start off the board a little bit different, a little bit spicy. Use the effect of your Orcus Symbol Skeleton to spell summon your Galtea where Topologic Bomber Dragon doesn't point to. And now you can use your Orcus Nightmare, banishing itself to send your World Legacy World Wand to your graveyard. World Wand is going to banish itself and it's going to bring back Orcus Nightmare to your side of the field or Orcus Symbol Skeleton. Actually, go ahead and bring out the Symbol Skeleton. That would be a better option. Use both Galtea and Orc, or I'm sorry, use the effect of Galtea to return your World Legacy World Wand to set your orchestrated Babel, or you can even set your or Orcus Crescendo to your side of the field, whichever one you see so fit. From there, you can use the Symbol Skeleton and the Galtea for a Link Summon into your Longrisu. Now, Longrisu is a unique card because while it's pointing the Topologic Bomber Dragon, well, it can't be destroyed by card effects. So uh, yeah, or while Topologic Bomber Dragon is pointing to it. Another thing is that we also have those two machine monsters in the graveyard to disrupt our opponent, and we still have the ability to use our Orca Symbol to special summon a monster like Galtea if we want to trigger the Topologic Bomber Dragon to destroy cards on our side of the field. The next thing is that we don't even need to do that. If our opponent just summons a monster in the extra monster zone, Topologic Bomber Dragon will trigger and destroy all monsters on the field. So we can actually just sit back if we really wanted to, banish to summon the Galtea, and Galtea can set the Crescent on our opponent's turn so we can have further use. Thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a like. And if you really did, consider joining our Patreon because we have so many other rewards for you guys that you would enjoy. Please like, comment, subscribe. But most of all, enjoy. I hope you guys are having a great day like I am.